Are you perhaps looking to partake in the perfect pasta plate? This is my tongue twister of a recipe, my pumpkin pasta with pork and peas. See that five times fast. This is only seven bites or seven blue points the way I made it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I am a home cook, an amateur baker, and I am here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now today is another one of mine and sticking with the fall themes, sticking with those who love pumpkin, I've decided that I am going to do, get ready for this name, pumpkin pasta with pork and peas. That's alliteration for you. Now that's alliteration with an A, alliteration, which means all of the words start with the same sounds. So you come for the cooking and you get an English lesson while you're at it. Can't help it. Okay, so let us quickly go over the ingredients that we are going to be using. Now I have one pound of pork chops in the recipe. I say one pound, about four. This one, they actually had some pretty big pork chops. So there were only three I needed to make a pound. But if you wanted more pork, obviously you can do that. Just input it into whatever recipe builder or calculator you're using to track everything. We have some cooking spray. We have some of my Fiber Gourmet. This one's the Light Linguini. Only two bites or two blue points a serving. Now, if you scan it, you'll often get three because they didn't adjust for new recipes on here. Now, this is 100 calories a serving. I think initially it was 130, so that's where the three bites or points came from. And I'm on the iTrack Bites Better Balance plan, which is equivalent to the WW Blue plan. So to go along with the pork chops, and you could use pork tenderloin or just pork of about a pound. You could also, if you didn't want to use the pork, oh, I forgot something. I forgot my bacon. We're really porking it up here. Okay, so where was I? Oh yeah, so if you wanted to eliminate the pork, you could use a pound of chicken. And we wouldn't have to get rid of the alliteration because then, because we're using bacon, you'd still have some pork in there. So it would be pumpkin pasta with pork poultry and peas. So you can add to the alliteration if you would like, if that would reduce the bites or points if you chose to use chicken over the pork. It's your call. To go along with the pork, we have some salt and pepper to taste. We're just gonna season those before we fry them up. And I have two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. And I'll discuss that in a moment as we're getting ready to sear the pork. Now for the sauce, we have one cup of pumpkin puree, a half a cup of grated Parmesan, which is about an ounce, one quarter cup of Greek yogurt, non-fat Greek yogurt plain, one cup of frozen peas that I've had sitting out for a little while. They're still slightly frozen, but that's not gonna bother anything. I do say thawed in the recipe just because it does cook through a little faster, but if you forgot to thaw them, don't worry about it. Or nuke them for 30 seconds to soften them up. We have one third cup of diced onion. And if you haven't seen my tutorial on onions, on how to slice, chop, dice, I will put a card up here and also link it down below in the description box. 
There is also two teaspoons of minced garlic. The recipe says two cloves of garlic minced or two teaspoons of minced garlic. Each clove is approximate to one teaspoon. Now here, in our spice blend, we have a teaspoon of dried sage, half a teaspoon of kosher salt, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, an eighth of a teaspoon of cinnamon, and an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. The recipe also says a pinch of cayenne, which I'm opting to leave out only because I don't want to, Paul's not a fan of spicy foods. And even though he wouldn't mind a pinch probably, I figure I'd err on the side of caution and not put that in. But that is part of the recipe, if you like a little spice. So we also have a one cup measure here because it's there to remind me that I am going to need one cup of the pasta cooking water. And you want to make sure that you reserve that because I've forgotten, but the starch really does help give it a nice mouthfeel, make it a little creamier. But, you know, if for some reason you drained your pasta, just put in some water, maybe toss in a little salt with it, but um, the starch in the water really does help. And last, which I almost forgot, we're gonna use six slices of center cut bacon. Now center cut, as I've mentioned before, and these are center cut pork chops, center cut pork is the leanest pork. So that gives you the best value as far as bites or points go and calories. So we're gonna use six slices of these and I'm going to cut them into what they call lardones or little strips, but I will show you that in a minute. So let me clear a few things out of the way. I'm gonna finish trimming off the pork on camera so that you can just see what I do to trim the fat off. I don't like leaving it on. Even before I was on a weight loss journey, just biting into the fat has never appealed to me. So I'll show you quickly how I do that and then we will get to the bacon and we will move on with the cooking. Okay, so you see that line of fat on the outside. I'm gonna trim that off just to make sure I reduce the fat in the recipe first of all. And also just, I don't like the texture of it. Um, if you decide to leave it on, that is your call. I am not a fan, but I just quickly, just follow along the line and cut. And it's okay if you leave a little bit. I'm usually okay if there's a smidge on there, but typically I try to get the majority of it off of there. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so now let me turn my pan on to medium high. And I'm going to try not to touch it with my porky hands as I spray some cooking spray in there. And we don't need you anymore. And then I'm going to sprinkle a little salt on this side. Actually, let me wash my hands. It'll be hard to do the pepper with the pork on my hands. Be right back. I also realized I set aside the pumpkin pie spice, which we actually need for this. And I got my tongs, so there's no problem with turning them and needing to wash my hands again. So it's just salt and pepper to taste. And then we are going to sprinkle on generously, fairly generously, the pumpkin pie spice. Now, if you saw my tutorial on holiday spices, I did say that you should use your spices not just for what the name intends them to be. And if you haven't seen that, I will card that here and put it down in the description box. Now I'm gonna rub it on there, which kind of negates the whole tongs thing, but 
Oh well, I never said that I thought things through, and if you've watched this channel before, you know that I sometimes fly by the seat of my pants. And I'm going to carefully grind some pepper on here. I mean, I am going to need the tongs once they're in the pan anyway, so it's not like I went out of my way and got something I'm not going to need. And once you got that on there, the pumpkin pie spice. Now, this is not going to end up tasting like pumpkin pie. It'll just give the pork a nice flavor. Also, I made a pork tenderloin earlier this week using the apple pie spice. And that was really good. Didn't taste like apple pie, but it gave it a really nice note. Now, save any of that pumpkin pie spice that you didn't need because we are going to use it later in the sauce and just get the sides coated as well. And if you need a little bit more, just sprinkle that onto your board and Tap it in there, like so. Okay, so now that they are covered with the sauce and the pan is nicely hot, let me set this over here so you can see what I'm doing on the skillet, just tossing them in. Now, what you're going to do, this is over medium-high heat. You're gonna let this cook for about three minutes until it gets some color on this side. And then we are going to flip them. But let me let that cook for three minutes. I'll be right back. Okay, so it has been about three minutes. Let me check. Nicely brown there. So now that it's got a good color, I'm going to turn it over. And now I cook the same way with chicken. This method that I'm going to show you really helps to keep it moist and keeps it from drying out. I'm going to turn it down to medium, medium low. And I'm going to cover it. Now I'm going to let it sit there for six to 10 minutes. I'm going to take the temperature and see that it got to about 145. Or if you don't have a thermometer, you can just check uh, do a little cut and if the liquids run clear from the meat, then that usually means that it is done. So I'm going to give this a few minutes and while I'm doing that, I'm going to actually let me set my timer so I don't get distracted. So I set it for six minutes just to be on the safe side. Now Lardones of bacon. You may have heard of them if you've ever seen Food Network. All it means is you've just cut strips right across the bacon, just like that. It's no great mystery. They use all these fancy words that sound impressive, but really this is all it is, is cutting across the width of the bacon. That's all. And when you do cook bacon, it's best to start it off in a cold pan because otherwise when you throw bacon or put bacon, like if you heated up the pan first and put the bacon in, it would immediately start to shrivel and get wonky. If you start it off in a cold pan, that happens more gradually so it's not such a shock to the meat but that's all there is to it is just little strips of pork just by cutting across the width so now that that's done i will finish up the pork chops and when they're ready i will be back Okay, so it has been six minutes, so let me just check the temperature on these. Now, as I've mentioned before, if you're temping 
meat, you want to go into the thickest portion, like in chicken, there's usually one side that's thicker. Pork chops are usually a little more even, so you just want to go in and try to get in towards the center, which is where it'll be the coldest. Yep, 148, so that's good. Just double check, I like to check. Okay, so these are done after six minutes. So I'm just gonna remove these to a plate and cover them with foil. We are gonna be cutting these up, so you do want them to cool down a little bit. So I'm just going to loosely cover it just so it can finish off any cooking that it needs. Um, let me clean out the pan and we will start on the rest. And I just noticed that I had my German apple cake sitting on the counter back there because I had moved it to shift things around. Forgot to move it back. So if it turns out, because this is an experimental cake, if it turns out, it will be a video at one point. Um, but so if you saw it, you got a sneak preview of what may be coming up. Anyways, again, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a paper towel to mop up this liquid that the steaming of the pork chops gave off. And even if you're not doing it for a meal like this, this is a great way of cooking your pork or your chicken to make sure that it stays moist. Because a lot of times, especially with chicken breast, you'll get that dried out. I know we've all been there. Um, but to prevent that, if you cook it partially uncovered and then turn it over and cover it, you will keep a lot of that moisture in. That's how I always cook mine. All right, so. Okay, and now we are going in with the bacon. I know I said generally you'd start bacon off in a cold pan, but we're just going to use the same pan. And if you notice, I've turned my knife to the back to scrape things in. Um, somebody that Paul watches on YouTube, a chef, um, John Pierre, I think his name is, said that if you scrape it with this side, it can damage the knife. So I'm cheating a little bit, not having to get another utensil and just using the back of the knife. All right, so this is down on low. I want it back up on, whoops, not that one. I want this back up on like a medium to get this cooking. And while this starts to cook away, I'm going to clean off my board so we can cut up the pork after a bit. Okay, our water is boiling. So we are going to salt it like the ocean because that's the only time that your pasta is going to get any seasoning directly into it is when it's cooking. You want to make sure you heavily salt it, if you can. If you need to, you know, tone down your salt, that's one thing. Um, but typically you want to make sure your pasta water is nicely salted, a tablespoon or two. Um, now this is the fiber gourmet pasta, as I said. If you know this channel, you know this is my preferred pasta. Uh, like I said, it's only two bites or two blue points, regardless of what the app might say since it's got outdated information. I do have a code down below in the description box for 10% off if you want to order some, or you can check their website and they have a where to buy. I know a lot of health food stores, it's sold in a lot of health food stores. I'm surprised it's not in Whole Foods yet. At least I haven't seen it there. Um, but this is my preferred, if you use a different pasta, you'll obviously have to adjust the points, calories, etc. 
um, to fit with what you have. So this will cook for 10 minutes. And I want to get my cup over here to remind me not to dump all the water. All right, so you can go over there. I'm gonna bring in the ingredients I will be needing soon. You don't need to watch this. Whoa. I always forget to turn down my pasta water so it doesn't do that. My mind sometimes really don't know how I manage. All right, so anyways, you don't need to know my trials and tribulations. Let me stir up this, make sure it's not sticking. And now that the bacon has cooked a little bit, I'm going to add some freshly ground pepper. Paul and I, I always pepper my bacon. And it really enhances the flavor. For us, Paul and I love pepper. So we like to pepper our bacon. You don't have to do that if you choose not to. Okay. But I'm going to cook this until it's almost done. And I will show you that when we get there. And then we will be able to move on. So I'll be right back. Okay, so the bacon is almost where I want it. We like our bacon crispy, and this is pretty close to being there. Now, just to save on a little bit of fat, I'm just gonna loosely wipe this. I'm not trying to get rid of all the fat in there. I just want to get rid of the excess. I still want a little bit of that for our onions. They're gonna go right in. See, that's why you didn't want them cooked fully, the bacon, because now it's going to cook with the onions even further. So if I'd let it go where I wanted it, then while the onions cooked, it would probably get overly done. So the onions are in. You're just going to cook this until they're translucent, probably about three or four minutes. And our pasta is just about done. So while I'm thinking of it, let me scoop out one cup of pasta water before my alarm goes off, which it will any second now. And let me test one of these noodles. Make sure, ow. Actually, needs another minute. So I will keep an eye on this. Check on my onions, stir them up frequently, and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, now that the onions are kind of translucent, I'm going to add in the peas, just because they are still slightly frozen, so I want them to cook up a little bit. And this is gonna to help to cool down the pan, so when we add in our sauce ingredients, it won't be too, too hot. And I'm gonna add in the garlic. Because the pan has cooled slightly, I don't mind adding it in now. I just want to toss it around. I love that smell of garlic. Now, while this is heating up, I did want to mention, this is what I do when I come from the sink with pasta. I drain it into the colander and then put the colander on top of the pot to bring it back over to the stove because I have on many occasions tried to hurry up and get over to the stove with it just to have 
any water still in there dripping on the floor. So that definitely helps. Just a little quick tip there. If anyone needs it. I might be the only fool who's done that. I don't know. Okay, that looks good. So now we are going to add in the pumpkin. And I did want to mention earlier, I said two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. You're going to need one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, not two. Two would have been too much. So I misspoke and I probably, I'm sure I put a little thing on the bottom saying now it's one tablespoon one teaspoon, not tablespoon. Get yourself together. Um, so I want to stir the pumpkin in here first, just to kind of spread it out a little bit. And I'm going to add in the Greek yogurt and then the herbs and spices here as well as any leftover pumpkin pie spice that I had, which wasn't much. And stir that all together. Now you can see this is a very, very thick, pasty almost sauce. Hence why we have pasta water. Now I'm not going to add all of it in at once because it's possible I may not need it all. You just mix it in until you get to your desired thickness of the pasta, of the pasta sauce, pasta. Oh, some days. All right, so that's still a little thick. And you have to remember, you're also going to get the pasta in here, which is going to suck up some of this sauce. So you, it, when you think it's perfect for being with the pasta, just go a little bit further because that pasta is going to suck up a little bit. But that looks good. I'm going to add in my Parmesan. Stir this all through. And this is definitely, I mean, you can have this any time of the year, but it's definitely fall flavors at their best. Okay, now, while that simmers, I'm going to turn that down to low and let that simmer a little bit. Clear up some of this mess. Basically, what I mean is shove it to the side. And we are going to cut up our pork and I'm just going to add any drippings into our sauce because that's flavor right there. You don't want to dump it down the drain if you don't need to. So stir that in. Okay, so these should have cooled a bit. Yeah, they're easily can manage these. Just going to cut them into little bite-sized chunks. You don't have to be too precious about it. And I came up with this. Um, I had made that pork tenderloin as I was talking about. I had some left over. So I'm like, what am I going to do with this? It was a little bit. And I thought, why not throw it in some pasta? Hence, this recipe was born. Now, let me see if I can show you. Look how spongy and moist this is. That's obviously not a dry piece of pork. So that method of cooking it, it will really save your pork chops and your chicken breasts. Okay, so now I'm just going to Toss this in to our pasta sauce. Set all of this mess aside. Okay, so stirring in the pork chops. 
getting those all coated in the sauce. And it is getting a little thick again. So I want to add a little more of the water. I'll just add the rest of that in. So see, like you may not need all of the pasta water, but it definitely is a good idea to have some extra on hand to help thin out any kind of sauce, whether it's this one or another one. It's always a good idea to reserve some of that pasta water. Not that I always remember to do it, but it's a good idea. Now, I don't know why I get rid of my chongs because I'm going to add in our pasta. Now, one thing about the fiber gourmet, and I've mentioned this in other videos that featured this, is when you're putting it in the recipe builder as the um, whole package, it will mess with the points and bites. Like this is two bites, two blue points a serving. When you put it in the recipe builder, the whole package, which is eight ounces, comes out to 10 bites or points. And that's not accurate for a serving. So what I do is where it says how much of the pasta I'm putting in, I whittle it down until it comes up as eight bites or points. Now, for the sake of the calorie count and the macro count, I did it both ways. So the macros and the calories are going to be based on putting in the entire package as it is. The bites and points are going to be based on the adjustment to the recipe. But there you have it. Some delicious pumpkin pasta with pork and peas. As I said, you could add another pea in there and change out the pork chops for poultry, but that is your call. I love this. Look how thick and creamy this sauce is. I definitely, this is definitely a comforting, comforting dish. And you get a smell of the pumpkin, like a hint of it, but it's not like pumpkin thrown in your face which a lot of people, I believe, people who say they don't like pumpkin, they're thinking of the spices that make a pumpkin pie usually, because pumpkin itself typically doesn't have much of a flavor. And we only added a little bit of the pumpkin pie spice. That's just gonna be like a background note. So I hope that you will give this one a try. Definitely a keeper in my book. And for the bites on this, you know I try to keep them low, but a portion of this is seven bites or seven blue points. If you're following calories, they are 406 calories. The fat is 12.1 grams. The carbs are 53.5 grams. And the protein is 42.7 grams. And that's as is, I, didn't, I made sure that I did it for the whole package of pasta. And again, if you're using a different pasta, then obviously calculate for what you're using. So I hope you will give this a try. It is definitely a keeper in my book. And if you liked this video or like this type of meal, give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and you are looking for recipes that can help you on a weight loss journey and hit the notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video. I am doing a collaboration Sunday by the time this comes out for Halloween. Um, so that one's a bonus video. I don't usually do them on Sundays, but this will be a bonus. So just hit the notification bell so that you are notified when that one comes out or any of mine come out. And comment down below if this sounds like something that is appetizing to you. Or comment down below if you're one of those people who does not like pumpkin. Uh, if that's the case, I'm sorry. But I think if you try it this way, you might change your mind. So I'd also love for you to follow me over on social media. Here is my Instagram handle. 
as well as the two Facebook groups that I am a part of. One is my own, which is Recipes with Roy, and the other one is Finding Our Way, W-E-I-G-H, that I co-admin with Jennifer Lynn from the Jennifer Lynn channel, as well as Brie Coleman from Balancing Life with Brie. So join us over there, lots of tips, tricks, recipes, support, whatever you need, just ask. There are plenty of people who might have an answer for you. So I guess it is time for us to go have a delicious pumpkin pasta pork pea dinner. Say that five times fast. So until next time, bye.